Now let's shift our attention to DevOps. So what is DevOps? Now I touched base on it in my last video as well, but here I'm gonna go slightly more in depth. I think it's a very real world topic right now and very important for you to understand as a network engineer because today is network engineering is all about DevOps and you must understand what that means. So what does it stand for? Well, it comes from two different terms. Software development, that's the dev piece of it, and network operations, that's the ops and the DevOps. So when we combine the two together, we get the term DevOps. Now you might be scratching your head thinking, software development and network operations are two completely opposite end of the spectrum. So what are we trying to do here? Well, let me explain what has transpired over the past decade, especially over the past half a decade or so that has accelerated the trend of adopting the DevOps movement. So first, let me take a step back and give you the official definition of DevOps. It's a discipline of applying software development agile methodology principles to networking. So for those of us that are familiar with agile type project management approach, agile methodology is basically we do projects in sprints and we do them at a very, very rapid pace. Sprints are basically the amount of time that each sprint might be made up of. So for example, you may have sprint one that is two weeks long, and then you have another sprint, sprint two, that is another two weeks. So by defining different sprints, you're breaking the project into smaller chunks and smaller pieces, hence achieving the ability to have a lot of agility. This is where the name agile methodology comes from. Okay, so that's the first definition of DevOps. The second definition of DevOps, and I'm using another term here, which is also interchangeably used with DevOps, is called Net DevOps. And here the Net stands for network, of course. So Net DevOps is a practice that facilitates collaboration between the network design and network operations teams in order to automate the process of network design and changes. So what the second definition is saying is we have evolved. So remember how we used to be cavemen and then fast forward 21st century and we are now living in a metaverse. Similarly, we used to do things by hand. Now things are changing. Now we need to automate because there's a proliferation of technology, new IoT devices, new hacking attacks. And with new demands, you have to have a new type of methodology of doing things. So Net DevOps encourages network designers or architects to work very closely with network ops teams that are traditionally used to just managing and monitoring networks to create a automated workflow for network provisioning and for network changes. What that eventually leads to is what we call infrastructure as code. It's a buzzword. And you may also hear some other terms that are interchangeably used with infrastructure as code. Terms like programmable infrastructure and software defined infrastructure. Now, the agile methodology in DevOps introduces what's called CICD pipeline which is a catalyst for automation. So what does CICD stand for? Stands for continuous integration, continuous delivery. And sometimes the CD could also be called continuous deployment. Now, the continuous delivery is a more preliminary step. Continuous deployment is for organizations that are more mature on the DevOps spectrum. The whole idea is that we treat our entire network from start to finish as a pipeline. So now let me zoom into the DevOps framework. So here, once again, like I said, we're bringing the development team and the network operations team together. So what happens is the first thing that happens is the development team comes up with a game plan. They think of or conceive of an application they wanna design. 
So they go through the planning phase. Once they have determined what they want to do, there are dedicated engineers and teams that start writing that software code. And what I mean by build is that they either build the code from scratch or they integrate the code into the existing code that's already written. So for example, if you're adding a new module to an existing application, you would integrate code, but you may very well be starting from scratch. After all these steps, you would wanna test them to ensure that the code is valid and bug free. And then at that point, a handoff happens to the operations team. And this is where the release comes in. Then you release the code into the wild, but you do it in a very smart fashion. Typically you go from test to a dev environment or quality assurance environment. From there, you, you deploy the code. And at that point, the code is now deployed into the production network. And then you operate the network at that point and you monitor, you, you see the changes that you introduced into the network, whether or not they had a positive or negative impact. And, and as you can see here, it's a continuous loop. It's a self-perpetuating continuous loop of changes. From monitoring, you go back to square one again, you look at what else needs to be done to continuously enhance the security of the network to continuously introduce new features and functions into the network, to add more stability to the network. You go back to planning, you code, you build, you test, you release, you deploy, you operate, you monitor. So you get the idea, it's a continuous loop and it's a never ending infinite loop. Hence the reason for the infinity symbol here is that it's just a continuous cycle and to give you another perspective, typically when you write the code, you test it. And what you would typically do is you would create a bunch of virtual machines or containers to set up a test environment. From test, you will go into your dev environment. It's also known as quality assurance environment. It just depends on the organization, the terminology used. But the idea that the big difference between test and development environment is that development environment mimics the production environment very closely. So test may not have anything production related at all, but dev is an exact replica of the production. But the difference is there's no production devices plugged into this. It's just a replica to ensure that if the code was to be released into the production environment, it's gonna function as intended. And then once you're 100% confident that your code didn't cause any issues in the development or the quality assurance environment, is that you're gonna have the ability to go ahead and launch that code into the production environment. And this is where CI CD pipeline comes into the picture. As you can see, this whole entire thing is a pipeline. As we go from test to dev, from dev to prod, it's a pipeline and, and each element within the pipeline, we can go ahead and automate. So we can write scripts to spin up VMs and containers to quickly set the test environment. We can do the same thing in the dev environment. And finally, the code gets released and deployed into the production environment. And that said, deployment is where we're gonna focus next. This is where the automation tools or the network configuration tools come into play. Things like Ansible Chef Puppet, they live right here. Let's get into that next. But before I do though, I think it's important to let's take a step back and look at how we got here and what led to the whole DevOps mindset. And by the way, DevOps is not as easy as just sending a bunch of your team members to take a DevOps certification class and after they get certified, all of a sudden magically your organization is now DevOps organization. It doesn't work this way. What it is, is it's a cultural change. It's a cultural shift in the way your organization operates and functions. The organizations today have a culture of fear. What that means is changes happen rarely in our network. Changes are big and complicated in our network today. Teams aren't well prepared and practiced to handle changes. Changes are seen as high risk. Problems occur as changes are introduced. For Think all the weekends and and late nights after business hours that engineers and teams have to spend for changes to be pushed. And 
changes are seen as failure. So if you are a traditional network engineer, if you are making a ton of changes to your network every year, you're gonna get dinged on your annual review with your boss. And most likely you're gonna get fired for making changes because changes are considered bad in the legacy or a traditional network engineering mindset. But that's a culture of fear, right? The, the leadership, the way they design the whole culture is to eliminate and reduce the number of changes. But that's not the fact of life today. If you look at your phone or your iPad or Android, one thing you'll see is almost on daily basis, there are app updates that are being released to make the apps better, faster, more stable, more secure. Similarly, organizations need to be on the cutting edge to have a competitive edge in the marketplace and they need to adopt change. And this is where net DevOps come into play. So with net DevOps, the mindset is changes are part of life. Each change is small. Team is well practiced because that's all they do. They write code, uh, scripts, things of that nature. You test the heck out of those changes in a test and dev environment, like I alluded to on the last slide. Change is typically uneventful because you already tested it and you verified it in your quality assurance phase. So you know there's gonna be zero impact to the environment and changes are actually rewarded. It's considered a success. So the more changes you make as a net DevOps engineer, the more praise you're gonna get from your leadership. You're gonna probably get a bonus, a promotion. You're gonna be rewarded for more changes. So you see the difference. The difference is a 180 degree shift in how the organizations operate. So now, as you can see, it's not just a change at a network engineering level, but it's a change at a leadership level in the organization to change the company from a culture of fear to a culture of change that embraces change and thrives in the 21st century. Hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, give me a thumbs up, hit subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.